Okay. Uh, magandang hapon ulit sa inyong lahat. Magandang buhay. And it's so good to, sh- to you know, uh, to declare. Uh, nung marinig ko yung magandang buhay na, na bati, uh, it really gave me something so wonderful to share. You know, that's why every time nung marinig ko yan na uh, ibinigay sa akin, I really would like it to share to anybody. And yun ang lagi kong ibinabati. To anybody, even the telephone, to anyone that uh, I really uh, meet, even friends and new new friends that uh, I'm meeting, in, you know, in the streets or anywhere, and sa atin, especially sa atin, uh, maybe it's a good thing to really bless somebody with magandang buhay, yeah. a good life, you know, and that is what the Lord wants us to have. So uh, today, uh, as we have uh, something so good to to really study. Let us uh, bow our heads as we go on with the, the Word of God. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful today. And again, uh, this is one of the most important day in a week, O oh God, that uh, we are here gathered together because you have gathered us, O oh Lord. Uh, you have set us aside. You have sanctified us, O oh Lord. That we may be able, O oh Lord, to fellowship with you, to know you more. As we always say that knowing you more is loving you more, Father. And we're so grateful that your Holy Spirit is in the midst of us right now, Lord. And we ask your Holy Spirit to really, the one to teach each and every one, to open the hearts of each and every one, O oh Lord, our minds, to conform to your, your wisdom, that we may be able to, to really uh, know your truth and you may be able to reveal to us, O oh Lord, your perfect will. Amen. Lord, thank you and we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and everyone's heart and mind as we hear your words today. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as, uh, as we have started the new year, uh, it is good to have a very good understanding of th- those basic things that we, as Christians we are, we should really know. You know, napakahalaga yung maunawaan natin talaga, yung talagang katotohanan sa mga bagay na naririnig natin. So, uh, uh, I give this uh, message, the title, God's Grace, A Gift of Salvation. You know, lagi kong sasabihin sa inyo, huwag niyong pagsawa ang mapakinggan. Ang message about salvation, about grace, about, you know, yung giving. Kasi, uh, very related ang bawat isang ito sa message ng Biblia, sa message ng Diyos. Walang ibang patutunguhan ang, ang buong Biblia kundi dito. The grace, yung gift ng Lord at ang kaligtasan natin. You know? Umikot-ikot man sa buong Biblia ang, ang, ang lesson o ang teachings, doon din. Isa lang essence ito, ang salvation ng tao. So, uh, you know, uh, and the wisdom that we'll be having, you know, the, the truth, are the ones that will guide us to our Christian walk. Uh, to guide us to uh, this new year that has come and so that in everything that we do, we'll always, always be guided. You know, kasi napakahalagang uh, as a Christian, we have to really know na lumakad ng naayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. You know, kasi lagi kong sinasabi na pag tayo lumalakad ng hindi naayon sa 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 landas ng Panginoon. Nasasayang ang bawat paghakbang natin sa buhay. Tandaan niyo yan. Kasi merong guidance ang Lord. Merong standard ang Lord. You know, pag ang standard na ito ay hindi natin nasusunod, eh, hindi natin mararating yung destination na gusto ng Lord para sa atin. Just like yung sinasabi ko nga kay Brother RJ nung nag-uusap kami isang araw. No? Ang pagpunta sa langit ay para bang nag-aaral ka na may dapat kang ipasa. No, it's just a very simple, uh, you know, uh, example is to yung nag-aaral ka. Do you think makaka-graduate ka kung may sa- nine subjects ka o ten subjects ka, may bagsak mo ang isa, gagraduate ka ba? Hindi. Babalikan at babalikan mo ito para matapos mo at may pasa bago ka graduate. Ganon din sa, sa langit. Hindi ka makakapasok pag bagsak ka sa isang subject. Ganon yun. You know? Kaya very, very typical ang pagpasok ng langit. You know? Kaya we have to be uh, setting the standards wherein maipapasa natin ito. And to us, 
to you as students as well, imposible hindi nyo maipasa kung talagang you will give your best. Pwede hindi masyadong mataas ang grade, pero maipapasa mo ito. And that's the requirements. You have to pass it in order to graduate. Ganon din sa Panginoon. You have to pass His standards. And sasabihin ng tao, hindi natin kaya. We cannot do it. Oh yes, we can. Why? Kasi Diyos ang tutulong sa'yo. You know? He will set the standard wherein you will be able to fulfill it. Tulad nga sabi ng, ng Ate Surina, He will never give us things na hindi natin kaya. You know? There are so many struggles, troubles in life, pero pag ang Diyos ang kasama mo, baliwala yan. Dahil mapapasahan mo at malalampasan mo lahat yan. Ganun din yan sa pagpasok sa langit. The Lord will never send, say something na hindi ma-achieve ng tao. Kasi otherwise, naglulokohan lang tayo sa ang Diyos. Huh? Very, very, ano yun, common sense yun. Even ang nanay mo, utusan ka ba ng nanay mo, pagagawin ka ba ng isang bagay na hindi mo kaya? You know, parang naglolokohan lang kayo. Parang ganun yun. You know? That's why all the rules and regulations, all the commandments of the Lord are achievable. Kasi siya mismo ang kasama mong ma-achieve ito. You know? Are you with me? So, okay, praise the Lord. Okay, so, I'm sure that all of us here have heard about the word grace. You know, gift and salvation. Now, let me ask, are they related? Related ba ang grace sa gift? Related ba ang gift sa salvation? What do you think? You know? And my, I should say to you, it is yes. A big yes. They're so related to each other that you cannot separate them. No, they're so interrelated to each other. Actually, para bang uh, chain reaction ito. No? Uh, otherwise, there's no completeness or perfection. Uh, kuya? Medyo mag, nag, uh, medyo ano siya? Ay, it's a complete cycle of our journey to heaven, brothers and sisters. First is the grace that was given to all. You know? And then, it becomes a gift. When does the grace become a gift? It becomes a gift when you receive it. You know? Ang tanong, hindi naman lahat nagre-receive ng grace eh. Kaya hindi nila nakukuha yung regalo ng Diyos. You know? Grace was given to all, regardless of who, what, how you are. Pero hindi ito magiging regalo kung hindi mo tatanggapin. So the grace will only become a gift if you receive it. Are you with me? Okay. And when will it become salvation? When one keeps it. Kasi hindi lahat ng regalo kinikip ng tao. Halimbawa, niregaluhan kita, tinapon mo sa basura. You, you receive it, but later on, you basura it. So wala sa'yo. Are you with me? Yeah? Ganun po yan. Kasi ang lahat ng tao hindi, hindi tumatanggap at kinikip nila. Maraming Kristiyanong, yes, natanggap nila ang grace ng Lord. Kasi ang Lord na matay para sa lahat. Then, they receive it, yes, pero pagkatapos, itinapon lang nila. You know, a typical example, yung bawa, niregaluhan ko si Ate Ana. I-receive niya para hindi ako, hindi ako mapahiya. Pero, ayaw niya yung regalo, pinamigay niya. So, nasa ang regalo? Wala sa kanya. You know? Ang ba, niregaluhan ko si, si Sister Love. Oh, oh yes, nireceive niya. Pero ayaw niya. Tinapo niya. Wala rin sa kanya. You know? Pero ang ba, niregaluhan ko si Kuya Ray. Tinanggap niya. Ginamit niya. Inenjoy niya. Nasa kanya. Nakuha niya yung difference? That's how it is. The grace will only become a gift if you receive it, but it will be a salvation to you if you keep it. But if you don't keep it, you will not be saved by the grace of God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 said, Two eight ten. 10? Oh, sorry, uh, medyo naglaktawa ka ng kalo. Okay, for by grace, it says, you have been saved by grace through faith. Pasensya na, ayan na. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. No. 
Tingnan nyo, nandyan yung, yung, yung grace, nandyan yung gift, nandyan yung salvation afterwards. You know? It is a simultaneous chain of response from the receiver, the recipient. You know? Maraming tao na kahit i-share mo ang gospel, hindi nila i-receive, i-reject nila. And there are words of God that said, to whoever who does not receive the Son is already condemned. And totoo yun. Paano ka pa isa-save kung pagbigay pa lang sa'yo ni-reject mo na? No? Ganun yun. Ngayon, paano ka rin maililigtas kung yung binigay sa'yo, tinanggap mo, tinapon mo lang? Yun yun. So, it is so, so uh, very common sense, brothers and sisters. Now, you know, John 3:16 to 17 is one of the most important and one of the most uh, common for the for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send, send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. You know? Yung might be saved pong yan ay napakahalagang maintindihan natin. Hindi sinabi ng Lord na pag if you believe in His Son, you are saved. Sinabi niya that you might be saved. Ibig sabihin, there's something na you have to do, I have to do, para yung salvation na yun makumplit. You know? But the grace of God has, is there. He gave His Son. Tulad nga yung sinasabi ng yung giving, you know? yung pinakita ng Sister uh, Jess kanina. We are giving because God gave. He did the first giving. And what kind of giving? Believe me, the most, the most uh, glorious and the most extravagant giving. Mantake mo ibigay niya yung kaisa-isa niyang anak. Believe me sa inyo, mga magulang, mahirap gawin to. You know? Pwede mo bang ibigay ang anak mo kung kanino lang? Tapos, papatayin pa nila para lang makaligtas ng buhay? I don't think that's so easy to do. You know? Pero ganun ang ginawa ng Panginoong Ama. He gave His only begotten Son para lahat tayo ay eh makarating ng langit. Ganun katindi yun. The grace that was given na parang tinatapak-tapakan lang ng maraming tao. No? Kaya as a Christian we are, pag hindi po natin naintindihan yung sobrang halaga kung what is grace really is all about, naku, maliligaw din po tayo at hindi natin makikita kung paano natin papahalagahan ng grace. Akala natin ganun-ganun lang po ito. Hindi po. Pag ang grace ay na-miss value natin sa buhay natin, hindi po natin ma-attain yung perfect will ng Lord sa atin. Kasi, let me just ask you, pag ang isang tao para sa inyo ay ganito lang ang value, you will do things that is so much parang pareho sa value na binibigyan nyo sa tao. Just like our faith. Kung ang faith po natin ganito kaliit, ganito rin po kaliit ang gagawin natin para sa Diyos. Pero kung ang faith po natin ganito, Believe me, makikita niyo po ang paggalaw ng mighty Lord sa buhay niyo. Pero kung pananampalatay po natin ay ganito, hindi niyo po makikita kung gaano ka-wonderful at mighty ang Lord. Kasi linilimitan niyo po eh. Kayo po ang nagbibigay ng limit sa kayang gawin ng Diyos sa buhay niyo. And it's so, so the same. Kung paano yung pahalagahan. Halimbawa, halimbawa, Si, si Jazz, tsaka si Renz, you know? Kung pa, gano'ng kamahal ni Renz si Jazz, gano'ng din kalaki yung kaya niyang gawin para kay Jazz. And so, vice versa. No? The love of a parent to a son or to a daughter is so big na kahit buhay ng ina, ng ama, kaya niyang ibigay. And this is the kind of love na gustong makita ng Diyos sa atin. That we... As Christians, we are brothers and sisters. We can give our life to a friend, to a brother or sister. No? Napaka bigat po itong intindihin, pero ito po ang standard ng Lord. Kaya nga po siya, sinimulan niya. He gave an example for, from, for this. He gave His only begotten Son just for you and me to be saved. 
Ganyan po kalaki yung grace na nanganga, nangangailangan ng ganong kalaking faith sa Kanya para mapantayan natin. You know? Kaya natin pantayan yan kasi merong nakapantay. Remember Isaac. You know, in our Bible study, Isaac, siya yung kaisa-isang anak na binigay kay Abraham. True Sarah. Imagine, ikaw ba naman, binigyan kita, halimbawa, ikaw si Sarah, ako ang Diyos, binigyan kita ng anak, isa. Tapos nung sinabi ko sa'yo, okay, bigay mo sa akin yung anak mo. Gano'ng kaya kadali mong ibibigay? Sa iba siguro, maninisi pa eh. No, ano bang klaseng Diyos ka? Binigay mo sa akin, tapos babawiin mo rin pala. Di ba? Yung mga tendency na normal na maging reaction ng isang tao. But no, Abraham willingly gave Isaac back. Why? For the reason na alam niya and he has the great faith na sabihin, Lord, sa you galing to eh. Kaya it belongs to you. You know? And for that, what happened? Abraham became a great nation. Hindi lang si Isaac ang naging anak niya. Nagkaroon pa siya ng mas marami pang anak, kaya naging great nation talaga ang Abraham. You know? Millions and millions and millions came from the seed of Abraham itself. Ganun katindi ang Lord. You know, it's just a matter of we have to show how great faith we have. You know? So, how do we understand great grace? The grace of God was given to all. Jesus died for all. You know, so that you and me will be saved. But the question is that the grace was given to all, but why is it that not all will be saved? Because there are so many people, even Christians, are having this kind of uh, wrong perception that uh, once you are saved, you are saved. Are you one of those? Pag ligtas ka na, ligtas ka na. Hindi na pwedeng maalis. Hindi po totoo ito. Pag po kayo ma-deceive na ganyan, kasi ito po ay isang deception na galing sa kaaway na sinasabing, Oh, if, kasi sabi ng Bible, just believe and you will be saved. Eh, lahat naman kristyano naniniwala kay Jesus Christ eh. Di ba? Pero ba kristyano hindi naniniwala kay Jesus Christ? Wala. Kaya nga sila naging kristyano dahil naniniwala sila kay Jesus Christ. Pwede pa, even Muslims naniniwala kay Jesus Christ. Hindi nga lang sila naniniwalang Diyos si Jesus Christ. Prophet lang. Pero as Christians, lahat ng kristyano, naniniwalang si Jesus Christ ay anak ng Diyos. Pero, hindi lahat ng kristyano ay maliligtas. Why? For what reason? Matthew 7, 21-23. Sinabi rin kasi ng Panginoon, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Just imagine it. To prove to you na ito, mga kristyano, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in the name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you practice lawlessness. Alam nyo bang yung paggawa ng miracles, yung pag-prophesy, yung pag-cast out ng demons, yung paggawa ng wonder things in the name of Jesus, Eh, isa lang nakakagawa nun, isang klase ng tao lang, kristyano lang. Walang iba. Kasi sila lang ang gumagamit ng pangalan ni Jesus Christ to do those things. But yet, tingnan nyo, sasabihin ng Lord sa kanila, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Why? Kasi maraming kristyano na akala nila porket may mga gifts o powers, eh okay na. Hindi nila alam na number one dapat, eh we are doing the right thing according to the will of God. Righteousness again and holiness. Hindi porket may power ka, eh holy ka. You know? Being holy is doing what is right. No more, no less. Yun lang po ang katotohanan dyan. Kaya, dapat pong maintindihan natin yan. You know? Now, Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Tingnan nyo po ito. 
Isa pong katotohanan din na ang grace hindi dapat natin na uh, understood you know? Na hindi po porket binigay ang grace sa lahat ng tao, iligtas na lahat ng tao. Hindi po ganun talaga. Tingnan nyo. Sabi ng Bible, Enter the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to light. And there are few who find it. Amen. Yeah, hindi po porket malaki ang congregation. Parang simple application ito. Hindi po porket malaki ang congregation, lahat ng taong nandun ligtas. Kukunti lang po tayo rito. Pero believe me, kung ang Diyos ang kumikilos sa atin, Lahat po tayo, eh, 100% makakarating ng langit. Kaysa po, compare sa napakalangin ng rogation, na hindi nalam, hindi nila alam ang totoong pag, kung paano mag-fellowship sa Lord. Maniwala po kayo, sa malaking congregation, kadalasan ang member nila, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. Ganun po, hindi po ako nag pero ganun lang maging tendency ng tao sa mga malaking congregation, kasi po walang close relationship or fellowship na nangyayari. Tingnan niyo po, uh, ito, testimony, uh, ano po ito, sample ko, si Ate Sorina noon, lagi pong nasa Hillsong siya. Pero ang tendency niya po, ganun lang po, hindi ba te? This is Hillsong. This is Hillsong. You know? He just go to Hillsong, uwi. Hillsong, uwi. Hillsong, uwi. There's nothing. Here, no. Here we are having relationship not only with God but with each other. Amen. You know, and that is what we are trying to build up: Amen. the true and right relationship with God and with each other. Because sabi nga ng Lord, eh, love one another so that the people out there might see that you are my disciples. Amen. That's the very, very essence ng pagkakaroon natin po ng ganito. You know. And I hope you really are catching the, you know, this grace na binigay ng Panginoon. This is one of the big time controversies talaga. Arguments between different faiths and even different denominations, religions. Even within, you know, the, the, the uh, secular sect ng ating Christianity. You know, because only our faith has a divine hero, by the way. Tayo lang ang may Jesus Christ na divine na nagligtas ng sarili niyang mga nilalang. No, no other religions have this kind of uh, faith. Kaya nga, very controversial ito at talagang babatikusin ng lahat ng klase ng sect no? ng ibang religions. You know? And the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only begotten Son of God, uh, who chose to save men in His own unique divine way. They cannot even, the Muslims ask them, they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was crucified. You know? And what they believe is that it was Judas who was changed. Ang paniniwala nila, binago ng, ng Panginoon, ang mukha ni Judas para magmukhang Jesus, para si Judas ang makrucify. So parang minajik daw ng Panginoon, ang mukha ni Judas, para siya ang parang magmukhang Jesus, para siya ang makrucify. So that's what they believe. Even you, you ask uh, Muslims about this, and that is what they believe in. You know, and sa iba naman, meron naman silang ibang hero, kada sa Buddha, si, si Buddha, sa, sa mga Hare Krishna, iba rin. You know? So, iba-iba. Iba-iba ang mga heroes ng, ng ibang sect, but we have one and only Jesus Christ. You know? And kung yung grace na yon applicable, yung, kasi sabi ng marami, no? oh, pare-pareho lang yan. Do you believe this too? Pare-pareho lang yan. Iba-iba lang ang daan. You know? The grace of God is all the same. Iba-iba lang ang daan. Pero isa lang ang patutunguhan. Do you believe that? Yeah. Huh? Paano mo sasabihin niya? Okay. John 14.6 Kung totoo, yung sinasabi nilang yan, oh, pare-pareho lang yan. No? Isa lang ang pupuntahan lahat niyan. Ang mahalaga, maniwala ka, hindi ka gumawa ng masama. Let's see this one. 
Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. Eh kung hindi ka naniniwala kay Jesus Christ, paano to? Paano yan? How will you apply this word of the Lord Jesus Christ himself kung totoo yung sinasabi lang pare-pareho lang yan, isa lang ang pupuntahan? No? Kasi kung totoo yun, then the Lord Jesus Christ is a liar. And the word of God is a big lie. Kasi hindi nyo pwedeng may reconcile yung dalawa eh. No? Are you with me? So ibig sabihin, kung totoo ang salita ng Lord, lahat ng hindi naniniwala kay Jesus Christ, hindi makakarating ng langit. And yun ang katotohanan. Kasi you have to believe. Kasi sabi ng Lord, walang makakapunta sa Ama ang hindi dadaan sa akin. Eh, paano kung hindi ka naniwala kay Jesus Christ, pa paano ka dadaan sa Kanya? Ito wala na. Walang pag-asa yun. And that's true. Yun ang katotohanan. Masakit man sabihin, yun ang katotohanan. Even sabi niya nga kanina, di ba? But narrow is the gate that leads to life. And it's difficult. Hindi niya sinabing easy. Natulad ng marami nang sasabi na, ah, pare-pareho na yung mahalaga. Huwag kang gumawa ng masama you know, uh, ma- basta mabuti ka lang. That's it. Alam niyo, malaking deception yun, mga kapatid. That's the biggest deception of the devil. Kasi marami namang masamang taong gumagawa ng mabuti eh. Para bang lalabas na right minus wrong? Sampu ang kabutihan mo, apat ang kasamaan mo, ten minus four, six, pasado ka. Pasado ka sa langit. Parang ganon. Kung kailangan mo lang gumawa ng mabuti para pumasok ng langit. Halimbawa, e eh, paano kung sampu ang kabutihan mo, anim ang mali mo, four lang ang kabutihan mo, pasado ka kaya? Ano bang standard Lord? 50% passing? Hindi. 100% passing sa Lord. Kailangan, sampu ang kabutihan mo, zero ang kasamaan mo. Yan ang standard ng Lord. Palagay niyo ba, kaya natin? O siyempre. Sinet niya yan eh. Hindi pwedeng mag na hindi kaya ng tao. No? Pero nowhere na sinabi niya sa Bible na right minus wrong na, o oh, gumawa ka ng mabuting sampu, basta ilimitahan mo lang ang, ang, ang kasamaan mo sa lima, pasado ka 50%. Okay. Hindi ganun. You know? It cannot be like that. It cannot be like that. Kaya nga sabi niya, few finds it. Kasi konti lang ang makakaintindi, makakaunawa. It's just a matter of brothers and sisters of really understanding yung katotohanan para ma-apply mo o ma-achieve mo. Kasi pag hindi natin naintindihan ang prinsipyo ng Lord, hindi natin ma- ano to, ma-achieve to. Magiging washy-washy Christians din tayo na sasabihin natin, oh, sige. Halimbawa, sa, between Christians, between Christian denomination, marami tayong maririnig na eh, pare-pareho lang yan. Especially when it comes to Bible. Lalo na yung matatanda. Wala na silang panahong magbasa eh. Para bang, ika nga, hindi na nila makukuha pang magbasa kasi nga, yung bang katandaan na, especially sa tradition na nakagawian na ng mga Catholics katulad natin, pag matanda na, mahirap nang i-introduce sa pagbabasa sa Biblia. Mahirapan talaga tayo niyan, struggle yan, but we have to do it. You know? Pero sa mga mag, mag, mag-welcome sa katotohanan, believe me, nandun yung chance ng totoong, totoong salvation. Pero sa magre-reject, kawawa naman sila. Pero as Christians we are, we are here not to give up on sharing and giving them the truth. You know? Yun ang papel natin as Christians we are. Lalo na yung mga bata. You know, the future, the future army of God advancing the good news is in your hands. No? Lalo na kung gusto nyo talagang maligtas yung mga mahal nyo sa buhay, yung malapit ng mamatay, yung mga ganun. You know, we really have to, to work. We really have to share the gospel. Pag kristyano ka, hindi ka nagsishare ng gospel, magtanong ka na sa sarili mo. Kung totoo bang disciple ka ng Lord. Why? Kasi ang Great Commission sabi, you know, Matthew, if you can put that in. Matthew. Sige, 
Sitting. Great Commission, yeah. Sit Matthew. What was that? So, so. Sit Matthew 26, is that? The last, uh, on the last verse. Matthew 26, 19 to. Yeah. Or 28? Matthew 28? Oh, yeah. Now, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, is that the last, uh, almost the last verse to that? Tingnan nyo po. As Christians, we are, we have to go into the whole world and preach. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you and law. I'm always with you, even to the end of the age. Alam niyo ba kung kanino binigay itong Great Commission na to? Sa mga disciples. Hindi po kung kanikanino lang. Kasi ito po yung time na a-ascend na ang Jesus Christ sa langit. E ang mga witnesses niya po, mga disciples. At yan po ang iniwang huling huling commandments ng Lord Jesus Christ to all the disciples. Kaya nga tayo po, ito po ang dapat nating pinagfokusan na gawin. Make disciples and preach the gospel. Kaya kung hindi po tayo disciples, hindi tayo makakagawa ng another disciple. Yun po, ganun po kasimple yun. Kaya we have to be a disciple first in order that we can disciple. So po, paano po natin isishare ang salita kung hindi po natin alam ito? You know? Ganun po kasimple ang application niya. So, mahirap pong yung gawin niya kung hindi po natin talaga alam. Ang ito, ikumbaga sa ano, isasabihin natin. And it's very simple, brothers and sisters. Kung nag-akala kayo na mahirap mag-share, napakadali po. It's all about understanding the word of the Lord. Okay, now, uh, Isa pong very very great purpose po. Siguro hindi hindi ito na hindi ito na nung nag ascend po ang Lord Jesus Christ sa langit. Meron po siyang uh, iniwan na nasalita eh sa mga sa mga disciples niya. John 14:1 to 4. Uh, yan tingnan niyo po sabi niya. Let your heart not be tro- uh, let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me ito po mahalaga to in my father's house are many mansions it is where not so i would have not told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself and that where i am there you may also be and where i go you know and the way you know Nakita niyo pa po yung napakagandang gustong gawin talaga ng Lord Jesus Christ. Yung pag-akyat niya po sa langit, isa lang ang purpose niya. I-prepare po yung pupuntahan natin. You know? At tulad nga sabi niya, i-apply natin 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hindi tayo makakarating doon nang hindi dahil sa kanya. You know? And yung pagpunta niya sa langit, yan po ang great, great purpose para dalhin po tayo doon. Wala nang iba. You know? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is the one and well-prophesied miracles of the Lord. Way back from Genesis. Kung naalala nyo yung, yung the seed of the woman, yan po yung first prophecy. That is Genesis 3.15. You know? Na the seed of the woman will, uh, will, be, will curse or will bruise the, the head of the serpent. And the serpent will bite the heel of uh, uh, the seed. Yeah, tingnan nyo. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Yan yung first prophesy po, prophecy about Jesus Christ, being the seed of the woman, na ibubruce ng serpent. Yung pagkapako po ni Jesus Christ sa cross, yun po yun. You know? Although, probably I should say, physically, na hurt ng devil si Jesus Christ, dahil sa kanyang pagkakasuffer sa cross, 
but that destroys him because on the cross the Lord Jesus Christ destroyed death itself namatay siya para mabuhay tayo no and that's the very purpose of it the grace has the very purpose of destroying death for us to have the chance to live to live forever no yun po yan and sa new testament as may isa pa po yung sabing Isaiah 7:14 Karugtong po nitong prophecy na to, nung Genesis, ito po. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel. Prophecy ito po nung Isaiah naman, thousand years ago after Genesis, kasi nasabi yung pagdating ni Jesus Christ then. And we know what happened. Yung virgin na yon is Virgin Mary. No? So the grace was given to all of us through a virgin at nangyari po ito nung New Testament time. No? Now, pinaliwanag ko na sa inyo kung ano talaga ang grace. It is the, the, uh, the magnificent, wonderful gift of God sa buong katauhan. Pero, magiging gift lang po ito sa mga tatanggap nito. Tulad nga sabi ko sa inyo, pag hindi nyo tinanggap, wala ito. Hindi magiging regalo sa inyo ito. No? So, how did it become a gift? It will only become a gift if you receive it. You know? So, ang tanong, did you receive it? Yes. Who didn't receive the, the grace of God? Pag hindi nyo tinanggap to, hindi regalo to, baliwala ito sa inyo. You know? So, all should receive the gift and the grace of God so that it will become a gift to all. No? Now, is the grace of God a gift to all or yes, it's given to all but not all receive it because not all believe in it. Hindi lahat naniniwala na talagang namatay ang Jesus Christ sa cross. You know? The announcement by the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary nung, nung binibigay ang, ang prophecy na ito kay Mary, you know, that he has been chosen and to become the mother of the Savior himself. You know? It is a mer- remarkable parallel containing and implying the divine inspiration. The first mention of the grace in the Old Testament is that it is in Genesis 6 to 8. Even Noah, you know, sinasabi na God has fav- uh, found favor in you. You have found favor with God, sabi ganon. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord as well. Pareho po ito na even in Genesis 6 to 8 about Noah, sinasabi ng Bible na Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Tulad din po ng sinabi kay Mary na you have found favor with God. Kaya nung binibigay sa kanya yung prophecy. Mary discovery of God's grace and salvation through the coming of the seed of the woman into the world is revealed in her magnificence, the soul that magnify the Lord. My spirit had rejoiced my Savior. Kung titingnan niyo po yun, Luke 1, 47 to 4, 46 to 47. Ayan po sabi, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Inaccept niya po yung grace na binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. You know? Personally, it was a gift, become, it was a great grace becoming a gift because he had received it. She had received it with all her heart. Just Mary found grace, so Noah had found grace as well. If you'll see in Genesis 6 8, parallel to this one, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the, the last. Uh, I think this is where, wherein, you know, uh, Noah becoming the blameless and righteous in his generation. And then this, the Lord said, the Bible said that, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. No? Both people, Mary and Noah, found grace with God. And just as they found grace, grace is something not being earned or purchased, brothers and sisters. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ died for all without us, without our good things, 
He died while we were all sinners. Lahat tayo makasalanan nung mapako ang Panginoon sa krus. No? Pero dahil sa pagkapakong yon, lahat tayo ay pinatawad. Ngayon, kung sino man humble himself to repent and accept na talagang kasalanan tayo, then that is where the mercy of the Lord comes in. And the grace of God becomes a gift to somebody who will receive the salvation of the Lord. Now, now tulad nga sabi ko sa inyo, grace is given, but until you receive it, it will not become a gift. And when you receive it, it is a gift, but until you keep it, it will not do anything good for you. So keeping it is for your salvation and my salvation. You know, in truth, how can one be truly and completely saved? May I ask? What is just the grace of God alone can, can really save us? Sapat na ba yun? Sinabi, oh, the grace of God can save you. No, it's not. This is the big, big lie as what I'm telling you. Ka- ano, kabuluanan po ito. Kasi nung alingan ng Diablo, para sa ganon ang maraming Kristiyano ay manatiling bulag sa katotohanan po. You know? Tulad nga sabi ni James, faith without work is dead. You know? James 4.20 my son, sabi po, as we close, as we nearly close po. So in a nutshell, kung aanuhin po natin, uh, the great gift of God is abundantly sufficient to provide salvation and everlasting life for the whole world. Yung grasya po ng Diyos ay sapat para sa buong mundo para mailigtas ito. Kalung- ma- malungkot lang isipin na hindi po lahat ay tumatanggap ng grace na ito. Kaya hindi po lahat ay maililigtas talaga. Ang malungkot pa po, e eh, konti lang po ang tumatanggap nito. At sa konti pong yon, konti pa rin po sa konti ang nagkikip nito. At sana po, tayong lahat na nandito ay eh, kinikip natin ng grace ng Lord. You know? Uh, sabi po ng Proverbs, 7, 1, to 3, as we close, near close. Ito po ang isang bagay na dapat po nating malaman. Kung pa paano natin maikikip yung salvation ng Lord. No? My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. And my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. And in John 15, 6, as we close. Isa pong napakalagang bagay na dapat po natin ginagawa. In order to keep the grace of God with us, ay to abide sa salita po ng Diyos. Sabi po ng Bible, I am the true vine. Sabi, Jesus Christ uh, saying this, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. We are already clean once we receive the grace of God, but we have to abide so that our cleanness will remain. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, mahalaga po ito, he is cast out, ayan, as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Very complete po ito. In order for us to have the complete salvation that God has provided, through the grace becoming a gift and a complete salvation, we have to abide in the Lord. You know, abiding in His words 
and following all the things that He had commanded us. Hard, but it is achievable. And we can do it because God will be with us. Amen? Amen? I pray and hope na naintindihan po nating lahat ang complete complete cycle ng salvation na kailangan natin gawin. You know? Hindi lang po tayo manatili, maniwala at nasabihin, oh, the Lord had done it all for us. Hindi po katotohanan yan. We have a role to play as Christians, brothers and sisters. Kung yung gift na nareceive nyo ay tinapon nyo lang o pinamigay nyo lang, wala pong kapakanabang ito sa buhay natin. Gamitin po natin ito so that it will bear fruit. A fruit that is worthy of eternal life. Amen? God bless us all.